Yeah, well, the cat versus mono hall argument is <laughs> it's one of those long held arguments that seemed to really start brewing probably around the late 70s, early 80s, when cat sailing really started coming around. And so, yeah, yachting enthusiasts around the world have been lying to each other for years, and uh, it's been the cause of some of the best bar fights out there. <laughs> However, in all seriousness, there are legit differences uh, between the two. And, you know, really depending on the design brief, whether it's sail or power, and depending on what the demands are uh, that are going to be made on this vessel, whether it's working or uh, pleasure yachting, cruising, fishing, whatever, you know, we always say the right hull for the right job. How hard can it be? The two formats, you know, really definitely often are different design opportunities. And they certainly offer it, the crew who operate these vessels um, varying solutions, depending on, a bit, again, back to the design brief. Uh, you know, a mono hull design, um, the vessel weight and stability are focused much more uh, in a tighter sort of relationship to the beam compared to a, a, a cat hull, obviously. One is much wider than the other, right? And so the, the, the weight and stability are focused across essentially one volume shape for a mono hull, and this is spread out across the length of water line and the beam. And the behavior uh, and motion of the mono hull, um, you know, with good attention paid to these dimensions uh, will be a hugely comfortable and safe ride. Uh, it'll have a roll motion that is easy, uh, that is uh, generally safe on, on everyone aboard. And even though uh, arguably and, and notably these two hulls, uh, hull characteristics have very different performance parameters, uh, it can certainly be argued that the monohull is going to have slightly heavier resistance uh, or higher resistance, primarily due to the displacement length relationship. And, and because that is carried essentially across one hull, a beamier distribution, in fact, uh, of that weight for the length of the, of the vessel. And when you look at the cat form, uh, we essentially separate two equal volumes into essentially symmetrical shapes and spread those volumes out uh, a given beam distance and those narrower hull forms result uh, in a different picture. They generally these hulls have a lower resistance form uh, where we know resistance is driven mostly by the beam uh, of the hull underwater and additionally uh, to the lower resistance you know a cat and monohull of equal length the the cat's displacement is essentially d dissipated over two times the waterline length. So if you have two boats, one monohull, one cat, and they're each 24 meters long, and they each have 24 meter uh, waterline lengths, um, the cat is going to function essentially with uh, a longer waterline due to the fact that she has two hulls, two narrower hulls. Now, is it really two times the waterline length? Not necessarily. That's a different problem. But functionally and sort of theoretically, her waterline is going to be longer, therefore the speed potential greater. 